Nachos Amigos, and welcome uh, to our Record Breakers, a music podcast where a group of friends gather together to share music with each other, an album at a time. It's like a little book club for music. Uh, fun time had by all. Still the same old thing. Uh, I'm PD Rave. Uh, and here with me is my team, my squad, my crew, my gang, uh, my quorum. Gang, gang. Uh, we've got David. Buenos tacos, muchachos. Mr. Petey, take us out. Warp Factor 5. Mm-hmm. We've got Drew. Hey, folks. Yes. Uh, and uh, since uh, Brett is going to be on assignment for a little bit, uh, we have our first member of the rotating uh, fourth chair. Uh, we have Matt. <laughs> uh, hi, folks. I'm, it's, it's me again. You thought you were rid of me, but you're not. The real fourth record breaker, everybody. No, the no, real I am, I am breaker. the permanent fifth record breaker. <laughs> you just have different fourth record breakers. Exactly. Um, wait. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out in the math where David and Patrick fit in all of this as far as numbers. The joke is I don't. Yes. No, David is the fourth record breaker, and I'm the fifth. Mm-hmm. When Patrick um, was here, he was the fourth record breaker. Exactly. Um, we're here to talk about music. We're here to talk about an album. Uh, we're here to talk about an album that I picked out, uh, mainly out of uh, curiosity, but uh, uh, but it's a definitely a, a, a cool album and uh, an interesting artist. Um, I was influenced by... Uh, checking out a Miami New Times article uh, that I a while back, a while back, and I put it on my, I put the album uh, by this artist on my uh, queue because uh, I actually have a little doc that's like my literally my queue of uh, of album picks that I want to bring to the show, um, and it was specifically about uh, the the yearly event called Global Global Cuba Fest uh, about a celebration of all aspects of, of Cuban music. Uh, there's a really cool Miami New Times article about the, this year. I think they pretty much do one every year. Um, kind of just uh, promoting it and stuff. And this artist was kind of the the cornerstone of the article. And I wanted to kind of like bring something that is from my, you know, my 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 culture and from being, you know, the the, the Cuban kid here in Miami, you know, Miami Cuban uh an artist uh a like a virtuoso jazz player uh multi-talented jazz player and uh his sextet it's going to be the Daphne Spirito uh sextet and the album is Transparency um let's talk about expectations uh we'll start with uh David David what expectations did you have coming into this album my first thought was, is his last name Sextet? But no, seriously. Um, this album was picked out uh, before I started taking my medication, so uh, my thoughts are slightly more coherent. Uh, a lot of the music that I really enjoy the most has jazz DNA inside of it, and, and a lot of influences from jazz. But this is some jazz jazz. And I was expecting that, but with a good amount of groove and maybe even a little bit of dance ability to it. And uh, I think that's important with this genre. Uh, it has to have something to pull the audience in quickly beyond just musicians and music enthusiasts. It needs something to... To give it a little swing, because you know the old saying, it, it don't mean crap if the track don't slap. So I, I was hoping for... Do a, do a, do a. You know it. Uh, I was hoping for some jazz with a little bit of fun and bounce to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew, what expectations did you have coming into this album? See, I saw... I saw the sextet bit, and I was like, okay, that could be a lot of a lot of different things. Um, and I don't know where Petey's going with this one. <laughs> um, 
and I the first two tracks, my white northern ass can't fucking say. So <laughs> I was I was hyped to say the least to hear this. Um, it was something where I was like, okay, this could be either something I don't get at all, or I get way too well. Yes. Yes. Um, Matt, what expectations did you have coming into this album? Uh, well, it's it's been a while since the last episode, which I was it's also been a while. on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, as I sit down, I was thinking, if PD told us anything about this, which I think he may have mentioned something, I have no idea what it was. <laughs> yes. uh, but it did have Sextet in the name. And in my limited experience, it's probably at least jazz adjacent. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, pretty much as far as I remembered. I also kind of, I think between my memory of something Petey had said and the name uh, Daphnis Prieto, uh, I'm like, it's probably, I, I remembered it being kind of Cuban, but I didn't think about it a whole lot. I just mm -hmm. jumped right in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Daphne, Daphne Pietro is a, is a, uh, veteran, uh, percussionist, veteran drummer, veteran, uh, composer, um, he's been out uh, a while, he's, uh, was, uh, I gotta, I thought I had his Wikipedia, but, uh, he was born in Cuba, obviously, uh, he was born, I was gonna look up, he was born specifically in Santa Clara, which is, uh, funny because it's like literally if you could if you kind of divided it, uh, the the kind of the counties or the the, the provinces uh it's one uh city over from placetas which is where my mom's family is from it's like right there in the center of cuba uh so it, it it's a wild right there uh and he's been going out of this for all just from like my research so i even I was not as when before I looked up that article I was not familiar with Daphne Spieto at all. Uh, this is me also exploring my connection to different genres of music and and exploring and, and trying to discover uh, those kind of things. Especially with I want to like dive into Miami music. I want to dive dive into Cuban music. And whenever I can like find something that's like in those things and like find a connection to that, I uh, I'm gonna like flag it and uh, make sure to kind of. Uh, bring it up for myself and check it out. Um, but yeah, it, it's he's a Grammy nominated, Grammy winning uh, uh, jazz musician, and he's got a whole team with him. He's got the he's got uh, Johannes Weidenmuller. I don't know if <laughs> that's exactly how you say, it, but I'm gonna go with that Johannes Weidenmuller, uh, uh, Roman Filiu, uh, uh, Dr. Spieta himself, Alex Brown, Peter uh, Apfel Apfelbaum. Hopfulbum and Alex Norris is the sextet uh, there. And yeah, this album musically, it is um, a lot of things. It is at its core very jazzy. Uh, he brings in a lot of the Cuban jazz uh, styles, Cuban jazz feel to it. Uh, it is it, at its core, it's very, it, it's a little, it, it can feel a little heady. It, it, it is uh, a showcase of talent uh, uh, on, in many ways. Um, but it can be very enjoyable. It has, it definitely early on, uh, you can feel a lot of those, uh, Cuban influences, uh, definitely early on. And then you feel like a lot of the mixes of styles. Um, and I think one of the things I was ex excited about with like sharing this is trying to get the thoughts of the actual musicians, uh, <laughs> just uh your perspective um but it, it is it is just um, i mean i can just go yeah <laughs> i'll just go no stay no stay um i, I don't want to be alone uh <laughs> <laughs> you listen to enough prog your music adjacent your musician yeah. adjacent it's fine exactly. that's how it works um, i'll take I it can send you an ukulele or something christmas yeah. is coming up close enough um yeah, and it's 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 it is uh does a lot of those things where where you get uh, these songs that are six seven minutes long, and a lot of the different musicians get their chance to shine. But uh, 
in different parts and it's constructed really well and it's it is it is um a lot of those different genres i'll i'll go to you guys uh david how would you describe this album musically it is uncompromisingly jazz these are musicians that are very much playing for themselves almost to a fault um th- that is what i would say first of all it, it is high level jazz musicianship almost to a fault there's a lot of really high level high quality playing led by Daphnis Prieto, who is a fantastic drummer. And I feel like if you can appreciate what everybody is doing and you can find bits and pieces and moments throughout this entire album to really that that'll really click for you, this will this will be a a fun listen. But there is a lot of playing and maybe not so much songwriting. But there's a lot of really solid playing. There's a lot of really outstanding musicianship. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew, how would you describe this album musically? One, I don't... I guess I wasn't paying attention much when I first put it on because it was not what I was expecting at all. Um, <laughs> besides it being something jazzy um with some horns in it um but david said it well the musicianship in this is insane i mean when you have a drummer that has taught at two different universities um and bringing together music like this and being a band leader you're gonna get that um it is dense it is a dense record as far as um, just playing goes all that while still like there are some like danceable rhythms in here which is fun like you get that groove to it which i think is great um you never lose like pd was saying there's this guy is from cuba and you don't really lose that through the record even though there's a lot of other stuff going around it um you can still tell he trains in <laughs> Like an Afro-Cuban um, milieu for quite some time. Um, I believe I saw that it was cla- before he went to jazz. It was classical and Afro-Cuban, which listening to the drums makes a hell of a lot of sense. Um, and it's every second of his drum work kills. That's before you get to the insane piano licks, the great sax work, the bass that just. Um, just grooves the entire time it's what i think jazz like does really well which is there's bits of it's all jazz but there's bits of bits and pieces of the world throughout which i think jazz does a really good job of showcasing um and when it can Mm -hmm. um matt how would you describe this album musically? Um, it th- something that really struck me was how full it sounded. Like sometimes it sounded uh, almost like more than uh, more like a big band than just a sextet. I don't know if if that was some clever overdubbing or if they were you know just that good and the harmonies just kind of made it sound like that. Um, there was. <sighs> This is definitely uh, what I refer to as capital J jazz. Um, you know, there's there's definitely, you know, the Afro-Cuban beats that uh, still kind of melt my brain, and I hope to someday better understand and not get lost when playing them. Um, something else I noticed is that there were several songs throughout the album that almost... Like, it was one track, but it sounded like they just, it was two different songs, and they just kind of went from one into the other. Like, they were fairly unrelated and didn't really go back to the, what they were playing at the beginning. Uh, I can't 
say you know whether that's good or bad or indifferent it was it was a little odd though to me mm-hmm. well, these, these are both really good concepts we can we can separate these out yeah um but yeah it's it's um definitely a lot of really i found i found most of it extremely listenable um which i i i whenever i say listenable i realize it sounds a lot more uh kind of uh putting it down than i mean for it to be but most of it i really liked uh there were definitely points throughout the album that it's like okay this is this is where we're at yeah. <laughs> this this is I, some I jazz 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 yeah, this is very jazz academic at times <laughs> can be, jazz at times can be great and also not listenable yeah, yeah. like okay we're we're getting into charlie parker territory <laughs> Ooh, good cut wow. good reference yes. i was gonna say that's a reference for people who understand <laughs> when jazz can be unlistenable. Well played. Well played there's, there's, there's a, there was a great line in the middle of uh, this past ep- this last episode of Critical Role. <laughs> it was a just D&D show in a fantasy world uh, where the, the, the Fern, the, uh, the Feywild uh, Fawn uh, creature played by Ashley Johnson uh, uh she says, uh, she's speaking to a dead person. It's like, I know you didn't like jazz, but, you know, jazz is chaos. And I hope we can appreciate the, the, the chaotic world. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, it is pretty academic and it is pretty heady. Uh, but yeah, well, let's talk about tracks. Let's talk about key tracks. And I, I, it, it's not, it was hard for me to really like pick out say this track uh because there's a lot of more like there's a lot of moments uh and there's a lot of like moments within tracks that that you you kind of like uh latch on to uh but i would say the thing i would just focus on is basically like the beginning of the album essentially uh which is like uh, amanecer contigo uh waking up with you uh or awakening with you um I'm gonna say contigo. It rings the Cuban influences early. I would say really well, um, in multiple ways, not just the percussion. Uh, I think that I think that the horns in particular sound nicely, you know, uh, Cubanish in in a really a really fun way, uh, and it it brings that together. Um, no es fácil. It ain't easy. It's, it's not easy. easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Taint easy. Um, slows things down effectively. Kind of like you know, brings things to the pace down uh, and, and eases back, on oddly enough, on things. Uh, and then uncertain tradition. Which is, I think that's what you say. Uh, uncertain tradition uh, does things really well. It starts with a really nice like percussion introduction. Uh that really kind of like builds things uh, really well and it kind of goes into a really dope song um yeah let's talk what you guys thought uh david what would be some of the key tracks for you or key moments if, you, if, if it's more like that um i'm gonna start contigo uh the piano really starts to go in at about two minutes and 20 seconds and it really sounds like they were having fun with this when it really starts to kick in. And I hope they were, because it sounded like they were having fun. Uh, track three, the previously mentioned Uncertain Tradition. Uh, this track is really carried by Prieto's drumming. Uh, around three minutes in, he finds a groove. Uh, but before that, the track is, once again, really fun. But if about the three minute mark is where the groove comes in. Uh, track six on the way for me. Uh, it takes a while to take shape and take form. It takes a while to get there. It is six and a half minutes, but when it gets there, uh, it One almost of the shorter tracks. True. <laughs> but in a weird way, listening to this track, it was almost like 
what I was hoping for from the whole of this album, where you heard all of the pieces of the band coming together to form a jazz Voltron. And the track ends with a really strong groove. And it really felt like this was the track on the album where everything really kind of came together. Mm -hmm. Uh, Drew, what would be some of the key tracks or moments for you? Uh, I'm going to try to say it. Uh, the first track, Amanacer Contigo. Okay. Um, well, like I said, I'm from the north and very white. Um, the horns are spot on. Uh, the groove is there. And then like David said, about two minutes, two minutes and 20 seconds in, the piano just starts going. And they're like, all right, we're going to... All right, everybody hold back. Wait, let them go. And then everybody else jumped in on it and was like, nah, we're just going to party. And like... Having been part of, like, groups of musicians that were doing that but not being recorded, um, I hope it sort of happened like that because it's a fun thing. Um, Feed the Lions? Like, the beat at times is like a jazzed-up hip-hop beat, which is cool. Like, and then having, like, the sweep up of the horns, I think, is really was really cool. It sounded really neat and i think this would be the one that like if people if you're showing this to somebody who doesn't get into jazz i think feed the lions might be the way in either that or lazy blues um lazy blues the legato nature of everything that pull forward it creates that lazy feel and i think that's really cool <laughs> um yeah um uh, matt what would be some of the key tracks for you? Um, tra the the first track, <laughs> uh, "Amanecer Contigo." Um, there's really it, this was a great first track. Um, it just kind of, to me, it it set the stage well. You know the the piano, like it gets you going a little bit, and then the horns come in, super smooth, uh, nice rhythm, just. And it just kind of puts me at ease, like, okay, I'm, this is getting me excited within the first, like, 20 seconds. And I'm, I'm in for this album. Um, uh, no Es Facil is a great example of a mic'd upright bass, acoustic bass, going back to that previous discussion, just... A uh, upright bass. Beautiful, like... Not only a beautiful sound coming from the bass, but also just the room. It's just perfect. Um, Cry With Me is one of the ones that uh, got a little too capital J jazz for me. I kind of... That and uh, the previous one, Con, Con Alma. Um, I, that was, those were a couple that I started to you know, maybe, maybe skip past after... A uh, few listens. Uh, on the Way is probably one of my favorites on this album. Uh, just the way it starts out pretty relaxed, and then it kind of quickly loses all chill, and it just <laughs> it's going, it's it's going, and it's not going to stop. Uh, it also helps that it's an up tempo song in a minor key, and I think I, whether conscious or subconscious. I think I tend to like those. Uh, and just kind of an uh, interesting chord progression that they're soloing over. And then the last 30 seconds on that track just really make it for me. Um, just because it... On the one hand, it is one of those things where it just... Okay, we're going to go into this rhythm and this groove that has nothing to do with everything else we played. But it's still really cool. And I really like that they ended it that way. Mm. Uh, and uh, Lazy Blues uh, it's it's a perfectly good blues which I, I assume is kind of the point I almost imagine like okay guys we're doing a jazz album we need to have at least one blues song okay we'll make it a good one don't worry it's really good uh, but it's 
It's uh, def- it's it's a little different from everything else on the album, for better or for worse. Uh, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's very well executed. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Let's bring it back around the horn and talk about some conclusive thoughts. Uh, David, what will be your conclusion on this album as a whole? I said at the top that there is a lot of music that I really, really like that has a lot of jazz influence and jazz philosophy, um, really high level musicianship, uh, really playing and knowing what you're playing and knowing what's going on around you. And I do have an appreciation for jazz. I gave this album about four full listens and it ended up really just being a background album for me because as much as I really tried to give every track a real intent listen, there were times where I really felt like I was just not being held enough. Uh, This is a jazz jazz album and at times it kind of lost me. Um, I, I can imagine how some people feel when they listen to my favorite band in the world, Dream Theater, uh, listening to this album. I, I get that. There's a lot of really good playing, but the songs were hard to find. The moments were buried deep. And most of the time, I felt myself drifting off a little bit. None of the tracks really held me. There's a lot of really good playing. But given that it was a jazz album, I was expecting a little bit more playing together. And for me, there wasn't a lot of that. There was a lot of everyone kind of being allowed to do their own thing which is cool and is expected with a jazz album but a lot of times they did not come back together and i was waiting for that and a lot of times it didn't happen prieto himself is an exceptional drummer he's phenomenal and the musicians around him are all really good but for me it just doesn't really come together the way I had hoped, especially given that this is a drumming-centric album. He's playing, but for me, it just felt like they were not playing around him. You have band tracks, albums, where the drummer is the focus, and everything is really super tight, and everybody really knows what the other person next to them and everyone in the room is doing. And I did not get that from this album. I didn't get any kind of tight playing or playing together from it. It was a great listen if you're really into jazz musicians playing, but the songs themselves for me were just a little too loosely put together. Understandable. Uh, Drew, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? Well, it's weird. Um, the jazz always sort of ends up being, like David said, a background sort of thing for me. Um, because it's just sort of playing. as, And like when something hits really well, I take notice and then let myself fall back into whatever I was doing. I always found myself sort of grooving to it in the background. And then like, the piano would do something or the bass would come in or something and be like, Oh yeah. Like that's great. Um, I think this does, like I said, those mixes, that fusion of things very, very well. I think it's very like smart playing from a lot of them. Um, but at times it did feel a little academic. Um, it did feel a little like, Oh, okay. They're doing this to like point out like this weird, time signature change that they're doing or whatever. Um, so it's some of that, but also he's a teacher, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, this, this at times I could see myself being like, Oh geez, 
my jazz teacher in university is bringing on his albums again. Like, <laughs> uh, like the teacher his makes friend. you buy their book. You, the, he makes you buy his albums um, yeah, because of his the thing he show did. That is that the like the thing? <laughs> Just like yeah. listen to that thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, but even saying, I mean, that, it was, I'd kind of be good. into it was that. Fun. Yeah. Oh, I'm not saying it's not something to be into. If you're if you're going to university and taking a jazz course, I'm sure you're fine with it. Um, but like, I could kind of tell, like, oh, okay, like he's doing a thing because he knows he can and he understands the theory behind it, and not necessarily because that was the perfect thing to put there. If that makes sense. Um, not that I didn't like it. There's a time and place for that sort of stuff, and this does that stuff well. I think. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily turn around and say like, Hey, person who casually likes music, listen to this record. But like when you are taking like a deep dive, like we tend to, like, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Matt, how, what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? Uh, like I said, it's definitely a lot of what I call capital J jazz. And this is something that I've kind of gone back and forth on because sometimes it goes too far for my taste, but I also enjoyed Sex Ted of Orchestra USA, which is just silly. So I can't really, I, I have yet to explain why that was not too far and this was when clearly if, if you haven't listened to that album, uh, go listen to it and you'll understand why I you will understand why I don't understand <laughs> um, you know I, I also I listened to this one while I was working uh, and it's similarly did end up as mostly background music for me with moments that it would just pull me out I'm like oh wow that's really cool uh, on the way actually probably did this the most uh, you know despite being a musician, I tend to, when I listen to music, I'm not really in analyzing mode. I'm not in analytical mode. I tend to let the music just kind of wash over me um, unless I'm specifically sitting down to analyze it for, you know, whether it's just figuring out the chords or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do think that there is, if I sat down and listened with like an analytical mode, there would be a whole lot to learn from this and find interesting. Uh, Prieto does have a book called Rhythmic Synchronicity, a rhythm course for non-drummers, which has my attention. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which it's only fifteen dollars for the digital version or yeah. the paperback. So you know, I'm kind of thinking about that. Uh, I would definitely buy the album for two dollars, though. That's that's a mm -hmm. definite for me. Yeah. Uh, I just a, realized I was muted. seal of approval. I was muted when I was trying to say a book about rhythm for people who aren't drummers seems like I need to buy that for my father for Christmas because he's a <laughs> guitar player with horrible rhythm. Oh, no. Um, his, mm. his guitar teacher was able to pick out the neighborhood he lived in by how bad his rhythm was <laughs> because the, <laughs> the nickname for Cuyahoga Falls um, back in the day uh, was a different C word. Caucasian false. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Yikes. "Oh, you're really good. Can you just play this rhythm with these notes?" And he tried and couldn't hit the. He could hit the notes, but not the rhythms. He's like, "So you can like solo and lead, but you can't rhythm." Do you live in the falls? <laughs> oh my Yikes. god! <laughs> Told my dad to get black friends. I was like, "God Yikes. damn it!" Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. It's, it's, it's like Rocky <laughs> Three all over again. <laughs> Yeah, oh my it's, uh, god! Love it. I need to seriously. I need. I'm going to get that for my phone for Christmas. Hell yeah! Yeah, I'm so grateful I was born Cuban. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Cuckoo's of thoughts. This is. It's very heady. It's very heady. It, it is enjoyable, but it's very heady. It's very academic. Uh, it can feel like homework. Um. If you're, especially if you're not super into jazz, I would 
I would find it hard to, to use this album as a convert uh, album. You know, like, yeah, let me convert you to jazz using this. Yeah. Uh, probably not. This is mostly please, like, please hey. Please see the previous album for a, exactly. a, a good version of those. Yeah. Um, and I would probably just start with salsa music and then work from there, if anything, if I'm doing uh, Cuban music. Um, like Silly Cruz, which I've done a couple of times. Um, but yeah, this is enjoyable. If you're, If you want to like either have really fun a really nice background jazz music uh with the, with the cuban uh coloring uh throughout uh it is it is nice uh it's well made uh it is well performed uh it does have the flaws that were aforementioned uh if you want to kind of look at it or like uh qualifications uh, <laughs> the aforementioned qualifications uh and it's going to be you know, probably not going to be uh uh like a for the casuals, um, but I think it's enjoyable. And uh, even if it does feel like homework, it's it's good homework, and it's not going to hurt you. Uh, and we've had a lot worse music on this show, uh, but I think it's a really good album. That is, if. It's a, that that is the same person going back and forth. I'm, I'm gonna be really pissed. Uh, <laughs> just driving back and forth in this neighborhood. Um, it's Daphne's just Prieto. yell. Yeah. Open your window and yell. Yo, we're recording a podcast here. Exactly. Uh, put the recording right on. Uh, yeah, it is definitely worth a try. Worth a listen. Uh, you wouldn't. You would be forgiven if it's a. It's a little much for you. Uh, but at least I would say give it a shot, and give it a try, and kind of like see if if it if it uh if it uh, piques your interest. Um, Side note: I sent this guy uh, to Jake, uh, the drummer for the Mulligans, and I was like, "Wait, who is this guy?" Figuring, "Oh, it's a jazz drummer." Jake knows this guy, and Jake was like, "I've never heard of this dude. What's going on?" Looked up one YouTube video, and then. Proceeded to listen to the entire album, but that guy's favorite drummer is also Buddy Rich, so yeah. it might tell you something about his musical proclivities. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Those are our thoughts on Daphne Spieto's sex sets, transparency. Now we're gonna get to the main event of the evening, the moment we've all been waiting for, the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, the haiku reviews where we sum it all up in poetic form. 575, our classic bit. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Let's get down to it. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Haiku numero numero uno. Uh, David, what is your haiku? My haiku. I don't find the groove well played, but not well composed. It did not grab me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew, what is your haiku? Uh, realizing that I closed the wrong window. Um, is what my haiku is. Uh, yeah. wonderful drum jazz as we come back to podcast. Good way to come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, what is your haiku? Capital J jazz, great Afro-Cuban rhythms. Lots to learn from this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we have a na- naked cat. Um, my haiku. Hey, TOS. Purring on us. Uh, Unshaved pussy, if you will. Exactly. Um, academic jazz. Cuban influence throughout. Well worth the study. Mm-hmm. Alright, and those are our thoughts on Transparency, the album by uh, Daphne Spirito Sexet. Um, you can, of course, check it out on our Spotify playlist. It's, both of them are still there. They're still linked in our show notes at recordbreakerspodcast.com under each episode. Um, you can find the links to the playlists, both with and without the episodes, uh, strewn in. Um, follow along in home, do your due diligence and your due due diligence. Uh, check out those albums. 
uh, on that Spotify playlist will also be next next week's record, and it'll be provided by David. David, what have you got for us next week? Next week on the Record Breakers podcast, the folks here give me way too much credit. I'm not a musician. But if I were, I would be a keyboard player and a synthesist. And the keyboard and synth sound that has always stuck with me the most, along with the Hammond B3, is the Moog synthesizer. Mm-hmm. And thanks to the upcoming Star One album from Ari and Anthony Lucasen, I was able to find a new keyboard player and synth player that has really caught my attention and really inspired me as someone who has an affinity for analog and digital synths. So I'm going to be bringing the August 2021 release from keyboardist and synthesis Lisa Belladonna and her album Moog Mentum. Ooh. Nice. Moog Mentum. Get your Moog Mentum. Um, we're going to have Moog Mentum heading into next week, uh, but that'll be next week, and this is this week, and you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Uh, let me actually play the outro so then didn't play the intro. Uh, we're going to look and find us all over the internet. Uh, David is at Call Me DJM. Uh, Drew is at Extrusive Rex. Uh, Matt is at Emmerich W. Uh, I'm at PD Rave. The show's at four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Record breakers podcast.com. Record breakers podcast at gmail.com. Rebelly.net for this and other shows. Rebelly TV on YouTube and on Twitch. Uh, you can, uh, you can get down with us and follow us on both. Catch us live. Uh, we're working on schedules and things like that. Re setting some shows and, and figuring out schedules for other shows, but uh, uh, we'll have fairly it's regular my fault. <laughs> it's alright. Uh, it's my fault too. Um, and we're we're getting things ready, but, but there'll be streams uh, most of the days, hopefully, uh, once I get my schedule as well, because I'll, I'll try to have some, like, even, I've started even doing afternoon streams, uh, like I did uh, unpacking, which was fun. Uh, but yeah, be sure to follow the channels there. Uh, check out uh, Rebelli TV. Like, share, subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, do all the things. Uh, give us shout outs, give us reviews, all the things. Until next time, hasta los huevos. To Luke. Hashtag find Luke. We're so con- podcast, baby. I'm so confused. Brad, I miss you. Fighting. I guess I'll just keep being quiet. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>